If you're a buyer in today's market, you've definitely felt a lack of inventory. And I bet you've started to consider what it might be like to buy new construction. I mean, who wouldn't want a bright, shiny, brand new house that you get to help design? Well, the purchasing process is completely different than buying a used or resale home. I want you to be an informed buyer. So today we're gonna go through the pros and cons of new construction, and we're starting now. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica Monroe, I'm a Bay Area Realtor with Remax Gold and I specialize in Solano County. New construction can be a great option for folks that have a flexible timeline and wanna be involved in selecting all the final finishes. The pros are probably fairly evident, but make sure you stick around for the cons. There's a lot of great value here and I'm sure there are topics that you didn't even know to consider. Pro number one is design. With new construction, you do get to be involved with several different Different decisions regarding your home. Some will be structural and some will be design oriented. The builder will likely have several different floor layouts and model homes that you get to tour, just as you would a resale home. You get to understand the feel and flow of a space. And it's so exciting to see the endless possibilities. The builder has picked the finest finishes for the model home, so you get a true feeling of what your home could possibly look like. Typically, when you go to sign that purchase contract, the builder will present some structural upgrades that you have the option of making now. This can be a huge benefit and save you tons of money in the future. Maybe you change that den into a fourth bedroom, or you convert that half bath into a full bath. Maybe you extend that cement pad in the back or add an alcove that's finished with the same exterior as the rest of the home. Being involved this early in the decision-making process can be so much cheaper than considering an addition in the future. A huge benefit of new construction, especially if you love the aesthetics of a beautiful home, and I mean, who doesn't? You get to put your own personal touches. Once your offer has officially been accepted by the builder and construction is underway, you get to visit the design center, which is like the mecca of inspiration. Your standard package or base price will already include a couple different options for cabinetry, usually one or two options for flooring, for carpet, and countertop. I would just preface this by saying, go to the design center with a budget. It's so easy to just get lost in all the amazing finishes and you think, what's another 1500 what's another 3000 well the builder is going to require you to put a 50 percent deposit typically up front for all of the upgrades so just keep in mind it's important to stay on track with budget pro number two are closing cost credits or design center credit every large new builder will require that you get pre-approved through their preferred lender doesn't matter if you've come with a pre-approval in hand, ready to go, you're still gonna have to go through the qualification process with their preferred partner. There's a financial benefit for them to work together and typically there's an incentive that's passed on to you as well. That can be in the form of closing cost credit, which will help reduce your out-of-pocket expense at closing, or it may be a design center credit. So perhaps that upgrade that you wouldn't have considered otherwise is now in the budget. Now the incentives do change with the market and as you know, we are in a seller's market and that's no exception for the new builders. So if there's no benefit offered up front or no incentive, make sure you ask. They're likely gonna be a little more flexible than a seller would be for a used or resale home. Pro number three would be the home warranty offered by the builder. There's typically two components and again, it'll vary depending on the developer. The first component of the home warranty is typically fit or finish and generally lasts about a year. Helps to cover any malfunction or damage that's beyond typical wear and tear. Often included are cabinetry, flooring, interior, exterior paint, and trim. The second portion of the home warranty, generally lasting about 10 years, covers major structural components. Things like foundation, roof, ceilings, load-bearing walls, Anything beyond typical wear and tear may be covered. Again, important to check with the builder. Just like any warranty or insurance company, there's definitely gonna be limitations. Pro number four is reduced maintenance and upkeep. Obviously with a brand new house, you're starting off with fresh paint, a new hot water heater, new roof, new electrical, new plumbing. So the chances that you're gonna have to repair or replace something in the near future is significantly less than a used or resale home. That's not to say you shouldn't budget for or expect to spend money on your house. Every homeowner should plan to do so, but in the immediate future, likely there's nothing major that you're gonna to have to worry about. Let's move on to the cons. 
Con number one are taxes and mellow ruse. And this is the con that's likely gonna impact you financially more so than any other con year after year. So many of my clients don't know to ask this, and this is one reason it's so important to have a realtor with you. A lot of the salespeople in the offices for new construction, though very helpful, they don't offer this kind of information right up front. So this is the number one question I ask when I go with my buyers. It's important that they have this information to take back to their lenders so they have a true understanding of what their monthly payment's gonna be. Typically for developments, bonds are taken out to finance the infrastructure and new development, and that gets passed on to the homeowners. So as an example, Solano County, we have a set property tax rate of 1%. From there, you start adding on mellow ruse or special assessment taxes, and for new developments, I've seen them set as high as 1.8%. So you better believe that that's gonna impact your monthly payment significantly. It's important to note that mellow ruse or special assessment taxes are not exclusive to new construction development. There are some more established neighborhoods that are also in mellow ruse districts. So make sure to ask your realtor to check previous tax record, especially if you're shopping towards the top of your budget, you just wanna make sure that it fits into your monthly payment. In addition to mellow ruse or special assessment taxes, it's important to ask about HOA fees. A lot of the new developments have amazing amenities for their residents. You often have access to a lake where you can paddleboard, perhaps swimming in a pool, access to the tennis courts or private hiking trails, that comes at a cost. And it may be worthwhile, but again, it's important to budget for your monthly payment. Con number two would be fluctuating timeline. As I mentioned before, New construction is really great for people who have fluid timelines, but if you have to be out of your home or your rental by a certain date, chances are new construction is gonna be a challenge. There are certain delays that a builder just can't avoid, and the pandemic is a great example. There were constant delays or shortages of materials and labor, which prolong and delayed so much new construction. The builder definitely wants to close as immediately as possible because they're paying holding fees on that lot until you you take over the mortgage. So if it were up to them, they would have every closing date be on time. But again, there's just certain circumstances outside of their control. And it's important to understand that with new construction. If you are renting, perhaps you can look into a month to month option to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. If you're planning to sell your home, I've had folks that take advantage of today's seller's market and then go ahead and rent for a year while they wait for their home to be completed. If you're trying to sell and buy simultaneously, you do have an option to ask your buyer for what's called a rent back. It's essentially a lease that allows you to stay in your current home for an extended period of time after closing. In today's market, it's not that uncommon for a buyer to offer that time frame to you free of charge. So that may be a great way to help buffer any sort of delay with construction. Con number three is transparent pricing or lack thereof and hidden fees. You'll often see advertisements and billboards as you pass a new development complex, and it'll say, home starting as low as 500,000. And you think, great, that fits into my budget. I'm gonna get a brand new home for below what a used or resale home would cost. Well, what they don't tell you is the base price may not even include portions of your lot. A lot of developers will assign what's called a lot premium. It doesn't necessarily apply to all lots, but it'll apply to a lot that they consider more desirable desirable than another lot. There could also be elevation premiums. Perhaps your lot sits a little bit higher and has a little more privacy or a better view. That's gonna get tacked onto your base price. Most of those model homes are on an extended lot or a premium lot, so that's not what would be included in your base package. It's important to clarify what a typical lot size is because often it'll only be nine to 11 feet in depth for your backyard, and that really only provides you a small sliver. Maybe May not be a big deal for you. Maybe you don't enjoy indoor outdoor living. You don't foresee yourself using that backyard space, but again, really important to get clarity. Solar is now required on all new construction homes in California, but solar is not included in the base price. It's treated as if it were an amenity. You're typically given an option to either purchase the system outright, which can be anywhere from 15 to 20,000, possibly more, depending on how much solar and the developer, or you're given the option to leave which again is an additional monthly payment that you need to consider. 
Landscaping is not a hidden expense, but it's typically an unexpected expense for the buyer. Developers don't offer landscaping, so your yard is not going to look anything like that model home. It's going to be up to you to complete once you move in. Unless you want to stare at a square of dirt, you're probably going to want to budget for landscaping. We've already touched on the fact that the model home is not what's included in your base price. And if you want your home to look anything like that model, you're gonna have to spend thousands of dollars at the design center. Just keep in mind again, most developers will require a 50% deposit on any of those upgrades. The last con, which is equally important to the ones before, are having to make quick upfront decisions and sometimes without representation. It's really easy to just stroll into a new construction development Development, maybe while you have some downtime, while your kids are finishing up their sports practice, and you go and tour the homes. Well, if you register without your realtor, there's a good chance that if you were to move forward with the purchase, your realtor cannot represent you. You're basically waiving your right of representation. The salesperson in the office is really helpful. They can answer a lot of questions, but they work for the builder. They will not be your representation, and that's so important to remember. Keep in mind that having your own representation does not cost you more money. It's the builder who actually pays for the commission of the buyer's agent. It is so important to have an experienced set of eyes help you review that contract because so many decisions have to be made up front. Developers use their own contract. They're not the standard California Association of Realtor contracts, so you're not going to have the same protection periods or contingency periods that you would for a used or resale home. Why is this important? All of those protection periods or contingencies are put into place to protect your earnest money deposit. In a standard sale for a used or resale home, you can have inspections. If the home doesn't appraise, you can back out and still get that deposit back. That's not necessarily the case for developers. Typically, your only contingency is your loan contingency. With new construction homes, typically the first day that you get a set foot in your home is closing day, where you do a final walkthrough with a developer's representative and you point out items that aren't quite finished, maybe need a touch up or need to be replaced. You don't get to typically conduct the same inspections as you would for a resale home. You have to get special permission in writing from the developer to allow a third party inspector to come through. And they typically make it clear that they don't have to take into consideration anything that comes up on the report unless it's a government mandate for safety. Whether you're considering buying new construction or a resale older home, do your due diligence. Make sure you pair yourself with a really knowledgeable realtor. And that doesn't necessarily equate to 20, 30 years in the business. They need to be aware of what's happening in the market now to help you put your best foot forward. They should also understand the gravity of this decision for you. It's a milestone in your life and they should have the patience to explain every detail until you feel comfortable moving forward. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.